The following is a painting titled Man Shack Swamp. It's very representative of the typical scenes that many of us have seen throughout the state of Louisiana, where you have a gnarled old tree that you see that's so intriguing and so interesting, so full of color and texture that you can never forget it. It's a mood, it's a feeling that only those who have seen it and experienced it really understand. But it's a quiet scene, and it's a scene that uh, is going to deliberately be done in about one hour. As you can see, the center of interest is going to be the heron we see flying across the water. It'll have a primary movement of an L shape coming across here and almost into a U shape in that we're going to take this old dead looking tree that's now white against the darker background that you'll see in a moment. And uh, we'll, the L will carry your eye around here. You'll pick up your, this with your tree and then all of the surrounding information will fill in the composition in such a way that particularly the movement of the trees will lead your eye right down to the heron. It's done on 22 by 30, 300 pound cold press watercolor paper. And as I said, I think all of us encounter circumstances and experiences where sometimes it's really good to uh, set out to do something deliberately, do something very quickly, experiment with color, and that's what the purpose of this demonstration will be. And if it comes out where it looks halfway decently, maybe it's something we'll do in class together. But the primary thing is not the idea of doing it quickly, but it's the idea of having it in your mind what you want it to be, because that's the key to it. This is what a lot of people forget. And executing it quickly. But the idea and the composition and all the other factors that are necessary to make this successful have to be there. Notice the low horizon on a horizontal sheet always creates a very effective painting. Now, we're going to misket our bird and we're also going to misket the tree. So let's stop for a moment and uh, we'll execute that right now. All right, I've brought our monitor in a little bit closer. Now, I'm sure all of you understand that Misket is a rubber cement type substance that works very effectively as a masking tape, I guess would be a good way to describe it. And uh, let's see if, how this shows up on the TV. Okay, it's an, the particular brand I'm using is the uh, liquid. It's the Grumbacher Misket. It's got an orangey color to it. It doesn't show up that extremely in the picture, but it has an orangey color to it. And uh, a lot of people have misconceptions about painting Misket on with a good brush. Well, I'm using a, a good number four brush, and I use all my regular brushes for this. The thing you have to remember when you're painting the Misket on is that you're actually painting in reverse. A lot of people don't understand that uh, the misket is actually defining your outline. So you have to stay in the lines. It's very crucial. So we'll come right up to the edge. Now, the next misconception about the misket is the fact that because they're good brushes, if you use misket, it'll ruin them. The main thing you want to do when you're using your misket is to every few strokes you have to discipline yourself to dip your brush into some water now I'm trying to actually do this in reverse and after you dip it in the water just do it again dip it every few sections and it will last fairly well the next part of our composition that we need to look at is our old dead tree 
Now I just sketched this pretty much freehand. A lot of it is from memory. And as I paint the miskin on, I'm very well aware. You can see a little bit of an orangey tint to it. That perhaps it won't completely cover, and some of the uh, pigment that I paint over it may come through, which is fine. Now remember, we've got grass at the base of it, so we'll actually paint a grass effect. Now don't forget what I said. I'm, lit I'm taking my brush out now, lifting it over, and I'm cleaning it in some fresh water. I think what I'll do is I'll just go right up the trunk of it and fill that in, and then I'm actually going to draw the branches in reverse with my brush. And I think this is where most people really fall down on their misket, or their misketing, I should say, because they actually don't do this. They uh, will use the brush and use it and use it and fail to clean it properly, and then they complain when it dries out. So use a good brush so you can come up like you're going to see me do in a moment and really put the kind of foliage and everything you want in there. Okay, let's bring this up like this. Now I'm going to start tapering this off to make actual branches from the, from the actual misket itself. Now let's talk about the subject of branches for a moment. Notice over here I just drew straight lines. That's because I want to actually draw the branches with my brush. And you want to start with a very thin area. Branches are like limbs on the body. They start thin and then they'll eventually begin to taper and get thicker. And the best illustration I like to use in thinking about uh, something like this is to think of your arm or a limb on your body. It starts thicker as it comes off of your body and it, you can see it gradually taper and get thinner. Now the main thing you want to do is to find a brush that works. So if the, the point on it is worn a little bit or something like that, you can't get the exact point you want, just get you another brush that will give you the effect that you would like to have. Okay, I've got this one working pretty much like I want it to work. So Now, I think everyone knows that what I'm painting on here is going to come out in reverse. I'll just rub it like rubber cement. When I lift it up, this will be solid white. Okay, now we'll come off over here. Come on up this way, and again, remember something that I never forget. I'm actually drawing branches in reverse, and this is something that many people forget. And they'll go actually get them too thick or whatever. So concentrate on that one fact. Now I'm getting my main branches in now and I'll determine in a few moments is exactly what I would like to do as far as whether I would like any other smaller branches. I think it could handle it. I think it would look good. So I'll just take my brush and actually sketch in a few extra ones. I've pretty well saturated what I want this to be, but I'm going to come in and
Just put a few more branches now, drag it on out, create a little bit more interest. And then whatever else I think I need on there, I can always come back in and add it with my white if I feel like I need to add some lighter branches. We'll add a couple of more. Let's fill this area up in here that's a little barren. I believe that'll do it. Now, always remember when you finish using your brushes with Miskit, you always want to remember to go clean it with soap and water and don't let them dry off and you'll never have a problem with them. Okay, now I'm going to move the camera back up where you can see the full size sheet of paper. We're using a pretty large brush. I'll show it to you on the screen. Uh, that's going to uh, allow us to wet the paper pretty quickly. And we're going to attempt to execute this in about an hour. Okay, we've got our camera focused on the entire sheet of paper. Now remember, this is a 22 by 30 sheet of watercolor paper. And I want to take a moment, even though this might be a little bit difficult for you to see because of the size of it, but let's look at the uh, colors I'm going to be using. We're going to use cobalt blue. I'm going to make a note of it. Rose matter, or if you have a alizarin crimson in another brand, this is Holbein. Hook is green. Burn umber. Naples yellow. Cobalt blue, and excuse me, ultramarine blue. Now I may substitute other colors, but for now that's what I'm going to begin with. Now I think one of the greatest fears that uh, you can ever experience in doing a, a watercolor like this is just to jump in and wet down that whole sheet of paper. So let's uh, take care of that problem right now. All right, let's begin to wet our paper now. now this always makes everybody a little nervous. No reason to be. It's a big piece of paper. It's got a lot of uh, porous qualities to it. Now some of it's running off on the floor a little bit, but that's all right. Now remember when you're doing this arches paper, it has a, a gelatin sizing. Therefore, if you want to do a wet on wet, you have to wet it, let it set up a little bit, work through the uh, sizing and then it'll get a little matte finish to it. You just simply uh, allow it to set up for a moment and wet it again. Of course the second time you don't have to wet it quite as thoroughly. One rule of thumb when you're doing wet on wet you don't have to Worry about it being too wet. Add a little bit more of this up here and let it run down. I can already already see, notice this little spot right here and there, you can't do a whole lot about that. Or maybe I can, I'll try to move the table up a little bit in a moment, not catch that glare. Okay. Paper's thoroughly wet. Now I have known of people that actually wet this paper and they'll leave it in the, in, the, in the bathtub for two or three hours. Okay, that's not what we want. Okay, even at the risk of not being exactly uh, even on all sides, while we're doing the wet on wet, let's just go ahead get rid of this lamp here. Let's go ahead and tilt that at an angle that will allow us to eliminate the glare. Of course, one of the problems is my water's running quite a bit. It's running all over a tile floor, so I guess that's all right. Okay. Now that we know that it's thoroughly wet, We're going to take the same brush. We're going to take a little bit of uh, 
the rose matter, which I'm going to say from now on, it's actually alizarin crimson in some of the brands you might be using. And we're going to go in and very faintly and lightly put a wash in. Now, color is going to look somewhat uh, strong when I first put it in. We're just going to go right across with it. Now, a little bit too much red. Let's just go with the straight yellow. Now these colors are very transparent. They're going to dry very lightly. And I'm going to just go straight across. It doesn't even bother me if I cover the tray. Notice very, very liberally going right across the paper. I'll make sure I cover every area as high up as I would like to cover it. Okay, now that's going to dry a little bit lighter. I know that's not showing up on the screen too well, but you'll just have to look at your finished picture to really appreciate it as far as being able to look at the color and all that. Now, I'm painting this like I'm painting the side of, the, of a house, okay? So don't worry if you have to move it up and down like that and so forth, move it around. Now, a little bit of it ran down. Take my brush and pick it up. Okay, now I want to take a, uh, a little bit of an unusual color across the top of the paper. I'd like to use a little bit of cobalt blue. I'm going to come straight across. It'll be a nice complementary color to what we're doing, but kind of tone it down a little bit with burn umber. The next thing we'll do is take our cobalt and burn umber. And we'll bring it across like this. Now remember all of these colors dry a little bit lighter. I will always, as many of you know, tend to go more towards the, uh, the more dramatic. Keep extending it on down. Now we want this to be a pretty, not foggy morning, but it's a morning that uh, daylight's just breaking. So we've got the deep blue sky colors that we're putting in right now. Let's try to make sure we get that wash on there evenly, okay, or fairly evenly. We're just going to bring this on down. A lot of people worry about mixing that color and having enough color going back in. I never worry about that. It's one of your greatest assets is to be able to come in and use different and mix your colors and come back in and come in with different colors even though it's supposed to be the same sky color that's a little bit darker it doesn't bother me now i'm having a little trouble getting this particular mixture to uh, blend evenly so we'll just go to our bigger brush now and we'll just bring it on like this
and blend it all together. Now this is a little bit darker as you can see on your screen. If you wanted to take it out, you just do like this. Doesn't bother me. Now I'm getting a little bit of glare at the top that you're so I'm I can't do anything about that on the TV monitor. But I think you'll see this will all come together. Okay. Now I'm gonna drop down just a tiny bit further. We use the same mixture. I just want some light clouds outline. A little bit too dark there. So we'll just come back in. Real light effects going across here. Drop down, maybe have a little bit of the same. Now as this is all drying, I'm going to get a little bit of my crimson color. Mix them with some of this towards the base of it. So we'll just clean that a little bit. I didn't mean for that to be mixed with some of the grays, but that's all right. Bring a little bit of it across over here. Maybe even a little bit of it up in here. And maybe even a little bit of it up here. Okay. Now this is, uh, I think we have a high humidity factor right now because this is staying fairly nice. Okay, let's take a little bit of that now. And the color we were using a moment ago for our darker blue, let's mix a little bit of it with it. Put us in another area. It's another cloud formation we'll bring across. Something to create a little bit of an unusual effect. And then we'll just come up at the top. And rather than using a Davies Gray, I'm going to use something in the order of a cobalt blue. Take a little bit of burnt umber with it, and we'll put a little ultramarine blue with it to gray it down. The umber is going to give it a little bit of a grayish tint. Now, since it's an early morning scene, I have a little bit darker effect coming across here. So we'll just kind of put that little misty area in the distance and run it out of the painting, bring it up, and then we'll start back down at the top again. Now you have to mix a lot of paint, and you, you, and you can't be afraid or intimidated by what you're trying to do. just bring this all the way across. Now remember you're seeing that little bit of a area right here. That's not looking smooth but it actually is. Okay that looks very close to what I would like to have in terms of breaking up the sky. Now I'm always keeping in mind all of the other things that I would like to do. I want to take a little bit of my hookah's green now. Okay, let me give you a little uh, wrong. Okay. A little indication of what you do with the wet on wet watercolor. Now, because of the fact that I've been working at the top of the paper, the bottom of the paper is completely dry. Now, you could either let this totally dry, which I would recommend to you. That's what we'll probably do if we do it in class together. And you just come back up and you connect all your colors. Notice it's not affecting anything. Notice how the colors remain. This will surprise a lot of people, but I'm just connecting water with water. 
The colors have already begun to set up. And I want just enough water to keep this thing wet so I can come down and finish my wet on wet part at the bottom. So look at how we re-wet that. Surprise, aren't you? We re-wet that without even touching it. Now, I've got a little color mixed up here. It's going to have a little green in it. I didn't intend that. But to be truthful about it, it's kind of pretty. So we'll just bring this across. Now you're catching a lot of glare, so you're not catching the actual values that I'm putting on this. You have to look more or less at your photograph. Okay, now we want to come in, and we want to put in some of our distant foliage. So we're going to take, it's one rule, a little co let's try a little cobalt and hooker's green. I don't really know how this is going to work out. One rule in composition you want to remember, coolest colors in the distance, warmer colors closer to you. I think I can live with that. All right, let's just come in and we'll start this like this and bring it on down around our bird. right up against the base of the tree. Now, let's follow through. We'll pick up a little bit on this side over here. All the way up. Now, I'll keep extending this on over and until I want to go into another level. Now, with this in mind, I want to gradually start bringing this towards me. So I'm going to take the cobalt and the green, hook is green light, or hook is green actually is what we're using now in the whole vine. Cobalt's not cooperating. Let's put a little burn umber with it. Too much burn umber. All right, let's get this nice lighter green color. A little bit on the cool side, but that's all right. We'll warm it up a little bit. Now remember, what I'm trying to do is to create the illusion of the effect of this coming closer to me. So we'll come in with the next layer of greens, and they'll be just a tiny bit darker. And perspective-wise, we'll go up a little higher just to look like they're a little closer to us. And we'll bring them down like this towards the base of the area we're painting. Now, we'll pick up a little bit of this right here. And why am I doing this? Right behind the bird. I'm going to bring it up. Just enough to make sure that our Heron stands out a little bit more, and I may even come back and darken out a little bit more later. All right, we'll come up over here, put a little bit of that darker base in there. Notice how that connects it all the way across. Okay, we'll take the green, the cobalt, the umber again. Mix them all together. And we'll just keep going up. Now, that's it. That's too much green. I'm not going to panic. Mix a little bit more umber with it and just integrate that right into what we're doing. Now let's just bring this right on up behind here. And in a moment, some of this top area might start uh, actually drying, which will be no problem. And we'll just bring this like this. We don't want to cover it all the way to the top of the painting. We'll give it a little room to get out, have a way out. And then we'll just begin coming down with our green, allowing our blue to come through somewhat more liberally in different places. Now 
Now again, it's mostly the umber and the green. We're just going to carry it right on over. Now again, I'm thinking of masses, okay? I'm thinking of the... Now since I finished this top section, my pigment is running, my pigment is running somewhat at the base. So let's just tilt this up a little bit even though, no, you're not picking up any glare in the water now. Okay. Now this will keep it running from running quite as, as much as it's been running. And just for the fun of it, over in the distance, take a little bit of my cobalt blue, or if you don't have any, just use a little of your ultramarine. We'll put a little bit of blue like the sky maybe or whatever it's coming through it's repetition maybe of our color harmony take take a little bit more of the green and the brown not use that quite so deep Okay, now while this is in the process of drying, it's getting extremely uh, saturated. We'll stop for a moment, and we're going to come down and we'll start concentrating on some of these lower areas. Now, again, whenever you're doing a wet on wet, full size sheet of paper, Put your watercolor rag under the paper. Don't lift the paper. Just put it under the paper. Keep both of them together and just come across like this. <clears throat> now, while all of this is still in the process of drying, I'm going to come back across the bottom area again one more time and just wet it. Try to wet it where none of the other things are. Uh... Now when I wet it, I want to come across here again with my Naples. Go in a little with something that's got a little bit of red in it. Just for a little accent and highlight. And then towards the base of it, let's go back in with that uh, cobalt. Now, I'm sure you already understand that this composition is unfolding as we do it. Which is fine. We'll take a little bit of the green and brown, and we'll come across the base of it like this now. Okay, that gets our blue a color in. Now we're going to come back with a little stronger value. So now what I'd like to do is I'm losing a little bit of my definition in here. And I'd really rather keep this rather light. So I'll just run that across there where I can keep the definition I'd like in this uh, area in the front. Okay. Now, I've pretty well taken care of what I want to take care of on the bottom. The paper's still a little bit wet, but I think I can do what I'd like to do next. Okay. The main thing I'm going to have to do is to get a lot of paint and forget about the wispy type of uh, colors now. I've got to come in and really make some statements. First thing I want to do is I want to take my green, it's the hooker's green, the burn umber, the ultramarine blue, which is going to give me an extremely dark color. And I want to come in around my tree. Well, just to be very opaque. 
And I want those limbs to really jump out when this water dries, when the paper dries. So we'll start off with some extremely solid pigment. And I think you can begin to see the darks manifested. Just mix a little bit more. Go right up the side. Now I'm not trying to cover everything. And I just got the idea I'd like to work a little red into here. Just something to break up the color harmony and balance a little bit. And we just make this like it's a little opening through the trees. Just something for interest. A little bit more of the red up here. Okay, this is starting to dry, which is fine. Now this may wind up being one of those poorly planned, poorly executed compositions. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now, I might even go almost to the ultramarine blue and burn umber. And just absolutely get the rich, dark colors in here that I want to make this tree really stand out. Now, in the meanwhile, all of this has been drying up here. It's also been drying under my paper, so I'll come around here. And again, I'll wipe it up one more time. So this is like doing, if you remember, when you did the fourth color watercolor. You had to just come in. Now, what bothers me more than anything right now is the fact that <clears throat> this shape just comes in like this and it's too even coming all the way down. So I will drop down to a one half inch watercolor brush where I can control it a little bit more. And we'll come back to my secondary color of the burn umber and hook is green. No ultramarine blue. And I'm actually going to come in too dark. Then while it's wet, or even if it's dry, I want to bring my tree definition a little bit deeper into the composition, maybe over that limb. Now it's definitely drying, which is fine. Start picking up a little dry brush now. No problem there, even a little bit up here. primary thing I'd like to convey is that the foliage is kind of ambering out in different directions from what's behind it. So we'll just, now I'm very much more satisfied with that, but I feel like I want to get a little bit more of my red in here. So I'm just taking pure red, blending it in. Now this is all settling down very nicely in here. I'm quite satisfied with that. Now I've got one area where the yellow just... I can actually come back later and wipe that up if I want to. I'm not going to worry about it. Now the one last thing I'd like to do, I think I'm pretty close to what I want in all the other areas. I'd still like to connect this together a little bit more. And then maybe on our horizon, connect this likewise to give some definition, maybe of a, uh, just a misty area in the distance. But the primary thing, of course, as you can see, as I work it out, I 
I'm just bringing my hair in out just a tiny bit more. Okay, now this is drying pretty much down here, but I'll still bring a little bit more water across, soften this part just a tiny bit more, bring it up into here. And again, I said I was going to finish this in an hour. I'm not going to be afraid of it, and I'm not going to be. Okay, now, of course, this is going to begin to run a little bit. In fact, it's leaving a nice little line. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, we'll bring it across. Just mix our green again and bring it in a little bit like this. Now, that soften that up. Carry the same darker green to the side over here for whatever reason. Now, I don't know why I'm deciding to do this, but I'm going to put a little bit of this darker base color right across here. Maybe I just feel like it needs some kind of uh, compositional structure to tie it together a little bit more. Now, since this is re-wet, let's take the same darker greens, come across here, create a little bit of a light area, and fade it out. Then we'll take the same umber and green mixture. Maybe throw a little Naples in there for whatever reason. And we're going to come in and try to repeat some of this foliage. Of course, where our tree is going to be, Keep this relatively light for now. Now, so you don't get frightened out of your wits here, what we're going to do is if we do decide to paint this in class, or if some of you may want to do it even if the rest of the group does it, we're going to do this in a number of stages. I'm doing it all at once, but I would probably in a class demonstration break it down and uh, <clears throat> figure a way for you to do it in safer stages, to say the least, where it would work. There's our bark of our tree. Come back and do it again. Mix a little bit of our ultramarine blue in there as usual. Now right up under this area, I'd like to bring it down a little bit. Now we're going to go to the ultramarine blue and burn them and just try to pick up a few of the darker sections at the base of the tray. Something to give it a little base down here. Now, this has uh, all been executed wet on wet up to this point. I think it's a good time to stop, allow it to dry, and then proceed to the next area. Now notice the section in here that I left white. That's actually going to be a darker section and I'm going to come back and not only paint that in darkly, but bring in a lot of other things up from it that you're going to see in just a moment. Many times when we're doing something like this, it's pretty difficult to see what something looks like without a mat. 
So here we begin to see our center of interest, the bird really beginning to come out. <clears throat> Here's our foliage area, which is all working out fine. You can really see the outline of our tree now, the reflections in the water. Now, what I'd like to do, this area is a little bit unfinished looking, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce some different colors, possibly yellow ochre or raw sienna. And it's funny how you look at certain things that bother you at the moment. And this line is a little too abrupt. So I'll just come back in and put a little foliage in there like that. But what I want to do now is come in with an area here that's going to manifest quite a bit of unusual colors, maybe burnt sienna's, yellow ochres. And then I'm going to come up. It's not showing real well on your screen. This is showing up. It's very dark. It's actually more of a middle tone. So I'm going to come up with some tree shapes to kind of fade it into the distance. And uh, then we'll have our darker tree here, which will, I mean, a lighter tree, which we'll bring out later. And, uh, but primarily I want to come across with my section here to finish this off, build this up as you're going to see me build it up. And then the last thing we'll do is come in and pick up all our colors over here in this tree. Now I've added a little bit of uh, raw sienna and barn sienna to the palette in addition to whatever colors I might use. And I'm going to try to create a grassy area here that has some light areas that are somewhat lighter than uh, what we're doing. And then uh, also have some pretty strong darks in it, but create a warmer type raw sienna, burnt sienna contrast in here, which I would in turn like to complete uh, and utilize in this area over here. So with that in mind, let's proceed with that. Now what we're trying to create in this strip right here is just a very light area that uh, will separate this area from what's behind it. And no other reason other than just to give it a little bit of depth. So let's take a little bit of raw sienna. come across here like this. Kind of blend it in with the surroundings. But remember, I've already fixed it in my mind that I want this mass area, this massive area right here, or mass I should say, to be darker. I'm just using a little bit different uh, color scheme, but I've decided that I do want it to be darker than what's behind it. So I'm going to come up like this. I'm going to enhance it with the color that I'm using, but it's not going to be a raw sienna that's lighter. Let's just come across like this. I may even want to bring it a little bit down into here and make this a little bit more uneven than I have it right now. So I'll just even come in and cover up some of this. Now, I love uh, doing crazy things with these raw sienna and some of these warm colors. I'm taking a little bit of just pure, pure rose matter, working into it now. And we'll bring up this, this area right here rather a little bit darker. Now, let's go to a little burnt sienna. Now you're not going to see this as well on the TV monitor as you will uh, a little bit later on when you can look at the photograph we're going to put our burnt sienna make it a little bit stronger just something for a highlight 
Now let's come in with the umber, the ultramarine blue. Let's start connecting all of this together. Now again, I may not even have a lot of this even showing through. Speaking of the uh, burn umber, burnt sienna, color mixtures and so forth. What I'm trying to simulate is somewhat of a, not exactly a fall scene, but it's late summer in Louisiana, Manchac. Certain areas, uh, the colors are beginning to turn. Now we'll come up. Notice how I'm allowing that light to come through it. See, I've got enough of those lighter colors now that the color's coming through, but I really want this to be a little bit darker. Now under it, just come in with a little bit more of this. I really want to go in with the strong ultramarine blue and burnt umber and create this darker mass. Now, of course, when you, you do something like that, you can either leave it a harsh line or you can come in, blend it, and I think that's what I'm going to do here just to soften it up just a little bit. And you notice a lot of it's running together, and that's what I'm really trying to get it to do. It's very foggy, whatever kind of morning you want it to be. Just not something that's going to be that distinct. And I might just come across here and just, for whatever reason, do a little bit of this. Just drag some emphasis areas across here. Now, the biggie is going to be to come in and put some trees that uh, really will accent this a little bit. So, I think it's all sufficiently dried. It's going to be predominantly an umber color, picking up what's on the bottom. And uh, it may not seem like that big a deal, but this is what's going to actually begin to carry our composition in the sense of creating some depth of feel. So we'll start picking up these dead looking trees now, or whatever they are. Now notice how that's rising up right from the area we're working in. And I like that so much, let's put in a thicker one. Kind of make it recede like it's in the distance. Not really well defined. And then possibly just let it run up into some of this foliage and disappear. And maybe perhaps give the effect that it's part of this tree section here and some of it appears again. What difference does it make? We'll bring it up like this, way at the top now. We're going to bring some of these areas up. Still now primarily with the ultramarine blue and burn umber. It's kind of all running together. Let's break this one a little bit taller. Watch you don't overdo these though. It's the main thing. A little bit more emphasis on them though. Some of that dried, some of it was a little light. Now we'll put
put enough branches coming off of it to make it look halfway reasonable. And then we'll just have another small one coming up here. Another one going in this direction. See, so gradually getting lighter. And then we'll come over here and we'll even have some activity here. Up into this area now, it's getting a little lighter. It's picking up that section where the light area is coming through the trees. And again, we can just have fun, do whatever we want to do. Now, I like the idea of uh, possibly coming in, scraping some of these areas like this, where you can see a little bit of that green coming through. Now, you can't see this too well on the TV screen, I understand that, but when you see the photograph, you will. Now, just for an accent, to have some little small, tight, now, our brush is a little bit on the thick side. Let's go to one a little bit smaller. All we've got now is some last minute accent areas. So, let's maybe a little moss hanging down. I think that hurts. A little bit up here. No, being from Louisiana, I always think it helps. All right, I think we got this just about where we want it now. Now again, unfortunately, a lot of this is going to disappear on the TV screen that you will be able to see on your photograph. And it's just something that we'll have to live with. Put a few more limbs and so forth over here. And I believe that's going to conclude this portion. All right, to complete our sequence before we go to our large tree on the left, let's make sure this stands out like we want it to stand out. And also that we come down, maybe leave a little light area. So put in some of our reflections. Very, very important. Of course, each layer that I add to this just captures the effect we want just a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to switch over and it's going to be a relatively dark tree. We're going to have a lot of different colors in it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and burn umber and just come down to create a certain effect and all along the way I'll add a lot of different colors to it. Now if you don't think this center of interest stands out, look at it right there without any detail. Let's get a little bit of our ultramarine blue and burn umber because that's going to be our predominant color. In fact, let's get out a lot of it. Now, burn ultramarine blue. And now, we'll get a little bit of that burnt umber. Now one of the things we want to do when we're doing this tree, you have to look at what you think of the basic value contrast. For instance, first of all, let's get a lot of yellow 
excuse me, Rossiana. Now these warm colors in here are going to look a little, little bit odd, but when I start bringing out what I want to bring out, I think they're going to all fall into place very nicely. Okay. Now since we've got this dark tree down here, the first thing we want to think about is the fact that uh, it's surrounded by a lot of this grassy area. So we'll come down with uh, a little bit of raw sienna mixed with whatever it's mixed with. Come up the side of our tree. Just keep coming right across. Now, I don't like to end something like this right at the center of the paper, so I'm going to extend it out just a little bit further into this area. Then we'll bring it down. Plain Rossiana just filling up this area allowing a lot of the uh, white to come through just doing a lot of different interesting things with it come like this now let's take a little bit of that burnt sienna come in start creating a lot of the middle tones whatever just something to add a mixture to it not making any kind of final statements that's what we're going to make with our darks this does begin to break it up rather nicely. Now over here I might want to start emphasizing more of the stronger colors and values and whatever. Okay now let's take a little bit of the green and the burnt umber and in the midst of this we'll just come up Start adding a lot of different uh, colors and emphasis. And then right at the last, we won't forget our ultramarine blue, burn umber, and come in and just get our extreme darks in, whatever kind of things we want to get to settle it down and uh, make it do what we want it to do. Now remember, this whole area down here, I want to be somewhat of a darker foreground area. Coming across and more or less settling this foreground area down and framing in what our center of interest is ultimately going to be, which will be the bird. I may want to make a little bit more dark area, some more dark areas in here, but I'm going to wait just a moment. We'll take our burn umber, ultramarine blue, mix them rather thinly, and start putting in our big tray. I notice I'm going to come across with a mass across the bottom. It's going to pretty well begin to frame everything in. Now, I've got a fairly good drawing. I know exactly where everything is supposed to be. So I'm just going to come in and do it. Now, this is where you have to really understand what you're doing, have a good idea in your mind, and just jump in and do it. Now I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty close to an hour now, but that doesn't matter. We'll just start bringing it on up. Now, it's getting to a point, if I wanted to highlight, let's see how this would look.
We'll wait on that for just a moment and I'll bring the TV in and let you see what I'm trying to do. Now one of the things I like to do at this point is begin bringing in some of the other colors we've been using. So to begin giving this tree a little bit of form, we'll take a little bit of the Naples and the raw sienna, kind of muddying up a little bit. I mean, what are you going to have in a swamp scene? So we'll bring it on down like this and we'll come over here, except I got to have a little bit prettier color than that. So we'll just come in and we'll run a little bit of uh, a burnt sienna in there with it. Now again, I have no earthly idea of what this is going to look like. But if you think I do, you've got a surprise coming to you. All right, now, I want to come in and I want to show that tree like it's like it is. And I'm bring, it, bring out a little bit of form. Notice I've got an extremely dark area. It goes into a lighter area, comes back in and out into a darker area again. Bring this up like this. Now, this is going to be definite dark. I'll bring that down. I'm going to do some other things to that in just a moment. Okay, now. Let's bring a little bit more of our dark area up like this. You leave a lot to the imagination, believe me. Okay, now, evidently, there was some kind of a hollow or whatever in this tree, and we're going to attempt to bring it out. Now, notice, <clears throat> we'll come along here. Occasionally, I'm going to just really accent the edges of it. You can't overwork something like this, but it's something that really will give you a good effect. Now, I'll come along this edge and do the same thing. Now this is straight ultramarine blue and burn number. Just something to really bring the darks out. Now I lost it a little bit down here. Don't mind saying it. I want to come in, pick it up a little bit like that, you see. Okay, now I'm gonna really be able to start playing with some of the pretty textures I'm trying to play with. Get a little bit of that green in there now. Now let's show a little bit more texture or whatever. Just something to bring it out. Now let's see how wet this is because you know, it's very nice to come in and do a few things like this, even though let's see if we can bring that screen down a little bit. Okay, now notice I've come in and I've scraped a lot of areas in like this. I've dragged my knife across areas like this, creating a tremendous amount of interest and in color. I want to just show you something while this is real close up. I really like to go wild with color at a point like this. I'll come in with a little bit of red now. That's what I love to do. Some areas like this that are a little bit not exactly like what I want, I'll just work all kind of colors into them. I might come back, scrape it back out, leave some accent areas or whatever, but that's all right. Main thing is you have to have your value contrast in mind. Yeah, everything's got to be clear. Okay, as we go up to the uh, conclusion of our tree, now with this camera focused up as high as it is, it's very difficult to make out any clear detail, but <clears throat> what I really want you to see is uh, I put the mat around it again, you can really begin to get a, a very good feeling of what the effect is going to be, whatever it's going to be. 
Okay, now I'm going to go in for the conclusion. And uh, I'm going to just go right up the tree, finish it, lift the birds and the tree out, do whatever we're going to do on that, and that's the end of it. Now, before I do, I notice the trees, these, this area is in various drying stages. Now, I know you're not picking this up on the camera, but you're going to see it on the... Uh, on the photograph. And we can come in, even though it won't pick up real well, we can come back in with white leader if we want to. Pick up a few light areas across the front of it. Now I might have overdone that a little bit, so I'll just tone them down. Because remember, I'm doing a lot of this with uh, a degree of spontaneity and I forgot I want this to really stand out predominantly dark against that darker area. Okay, we're just going up now and complete our tray. Now we'll just go right on up our tree. Now, of course, I'm superimposing a lot of uh, things in here with a lot of imagination. Let's imagine that's a highlight, another highlight up here. And possibly even coming across the tree like this. Okay, now, likewise, in this area, why don't we create some light foliage? Take a little bit of the Naples, a little bit of Hooker's Green, a little bit bright. Better tone it down, a little burn on, but. We got some kind of whatever vine growing on here. Now, we'll use that as a basis for our lighter area or texture to break up this thing. We're going to come in now. We'll just take the ultramarine blue and burn on, but put a little bit of this in here like this. And we'll break the tree up. Now, I did get this a little darker than I wanted because I want to keep my cavity standing out there. So, uh, it's part of the course, part of the territory when you're just winging it. Okay, now, here we have our larger limb up here. I'm going to bring this down. That one cuts across it. Let's take a little burnt sienna. I don't know why I want to use the burnt sienna, but just take a little burnt sienna and just something to break it up. Connect it with the raw sienna. Okay, come on up at the top now. Bring it down like this. Bring our dark in. Okay, now, repeat the same process. We're going to come over here, make this extremely dark. Now watch how we're going to kind of highlight the edge of this limb now, as well as the fact that this kind of comes along and maybe connects to some degree. So we'll do that with our ultramarine blue and burn umber. Turn back around. Let's get a little bit of our burnt sienna again. Bring it on down like this. And lastly, we'll go to our lighter raw sienna color and bring it down like this. Since I want this to really be accented, 
I'll just bring my darker sections in here. Now I have other things I'm going to do to that in just a moment, but for the time being, let's continue with our strong emphasis and accent on certain areas of the street. Now it's getting to the point, it's going to be ready to uh, perhaps, now remember, let's see if I can eliminate this. My top area that you're looking at up there, up in this section, is not coming out real clear because of the lighting. Okay, look at, okay, now, see if I can finish it like this since I don't have any wet on wet. Now you can see the contrast a lot better. Okay, I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and burn umber. I'm going to put the bottom of the base of this tray. Just come around like this. And here. I'm going to leave a lot of texture. Okay, now notice where I've got that darker section. It's almost like a straight line. It's like burnt sienna. Just run it right across it. Maybe I'll make this one completely dark. And we'll just sort of run all of this together. come across now with the raw sienna and our other colors again. The old branch broke off. Let's break it out a little bit further. And that was our main raw sienna. Now for whatever reason I picked up a little bit of red. And we'll just leave this branch stand out a little bit more. Bring it down a little bit. Now we'll take the ultramarine blue and burn umber. This may really accent this area coming around here. Why? Because we just want to. I think Manchak is. Uh, Swamp is coming along all right. Now the old branch broke off. But guess what? Right where it broke off, it had a major limb coming off of it. So we're just going to bring it right on up. Take a little bit of our ultramarine blue and burn umber. And we just won't mess around. Now let's come in and put some of our real strong dogs across here. Something to really accent this. Okay, now we can do a lot of things like up here. We can put a little indentures, darken some of it, put a little bit more texture. But I think one thing would help this as much as anything is if we just came in and created little bit of wood texture like this. Now you saw what this blade can do to it. The primary thing is just do it at the right time. Likewise here. Just perfect. And up here. And over here. This is drying a little bit more but we still get enough in it. Very effective too. If you know how to use it, you don't overwork it. Okay, we're going to go on up. 
complete our tree. Let's bring it right on up now. And at this point, whether it's light or dark or raw sienna or whatever, doesn't matter. We're just going to get it done. And we have a lot of little limbs in this later. We'll come back and put them in. After doing this, I want to take a little bit of our lighter color and put it over here, not that it really matters. Put some of our darks in the foliage. Okay, we have one more major limb to put in, so we're going to just take our raw sienna color lightly again and mix maybe with a little bit of burnt sienna. Bring it right across here. Really going in for the finish now. The ultramarine blue and burn umber. Connect this last portion together. Now we have one more little section that we'll bring up here. Let's get some of our lighter color. Now I did get that on there a little bit darker than I wanted to, so Let's come in and do this. Now again, we'll go for the burn over and ultramarine blue. Connect our darker section up here. It's got all kind of little funny looking growths coming out of the top of this. body grow funny in man check pass okay now I'm going to switch to about a number eight brush and I'm going to put in all the final limbs and then all we'll have to do is finish our other trees our other tree I should say